willow oak, we, we dug it a year ago in February. It was in a 20, it was in a, it was in a 24 inch knit fabric container. We shifted it, planted it in a 65 gallon container and let it root out. I wanted to point out several things to you. One is that when you, when you grow the tree right, you should be able to see those primary roots coming out just like spokes of a wheel all the way around. The reason there's a swelling here and here and here, it says there's a root complex developing at this surface. The reason this tissue grew and the tissue here didn't is because there's functions. Water and nutrients are going up and sugars and starches coming back down to allow this to expand. Notice this white gray, you see this gray material around here? All that's mycorrhizal fungi. That's good stuff. And look that when I began to brush this away, you didn't see many roots to begin with. And the more I just brush this mix that's getting fairly dry away with my fingers, you're just seeing masses and masses and masses of fine fibrous roots. All those things have to do is just extend horizontally and near the surface where the aeration conditions are most favorable and the tree's off and running. On September the 7th, so here we are the 27th. So here in 20 days, and I just made a bulge on this side that's about eight inches. You can just see the white tips. Again, I broke off the tips. Any of the tips that hit that fabric, they get trapped. That's the neat thing about it. Root tip trapping I discovered, gosh, years and years ago, but it's only been recently when I figured out how to, how to utilize it to an advantage. When, when the tip of that root can no longer extend, it has the same precise effect as if I cut it. If I cut the root, then I have an open wound. If I trap the tip of that root, I don't have an open wound. So the op opportunity for entrance of a, of a disease organism is, is, is minimal. If I air root prune it, I don't have an open wound. What I have is shriveled dehydrated tissue. So in essence, with air root pruning, I've cauterized the tip of that root. And again, uh, so you, you get the benefit of restricting the control of the tip of the root without having an open wound. Another point that I didn't mention earlier that I should have mentioned is that the younger a root is, the more responsive it is. And see, these are starting to branch back in here further. 20 days. And it's off and running. If you were to train plant this tree, would you recommend a whole bigger filling it with, with some soft mix or just put it back in the native soil? I'd put it back in the native soil. As quick as possible. Peat moss is the only thing, the only thing good about peat moss in, in planting in the landscape is it's a, it, the, the garden center sell a lot of it. It's a waste of time. But you can't, I don't know of a single study. We did our first studies, gosh, in 1969 or 70 that showed that peat moss was a waste of time. And that study has been repeated over and over and over and over. Nobody has shown any benefit from it except with azaleas. All right? But even with azaleas, what we ultimately worked out was that it's not the peat that's providing the benefit. It's the acidification of the soil. If we added sulfur, we got the same benefit as adding peat. So the sulfur acidified the soil. So anyway, um, oh, but I know the, the, where I was headed with some of these thoughts was the fact that when you're dealing with a very young root, 
it, it's at its maximum responsiveness. If, if I restricted or cut or pruned away the tip of that root today, within two or three days there's going to be branch roots forming behind it. On the other hand, if that root is the size of a lead pencil and I cut it, as typically happens with, um, with bare root plants or bald and burlap plants, or it's even bigger, it's a matter of, of a week, two weeks, three weeks, there's a wounding reaction, then callus tissue forms, then root buds form, and then finally roots begin to grow from that cut surface, as opposed to this almost immediate reaction that occurs here. If, if you want roots to branch at the maximum, do it at the youngest possible stage, and you will get more branching. See, if I can take one root tip and magnify that into 50 root tips or whatever is on this one on my, in my left hand, I've increased the absorptive capacity many, many fold. I, I didn't know exactly what we'd see, but I'm delighted with what we see. Wow. See, some of these are, some of those are probably eight, nine inches long out there. That's not too bad for this time of year. A couple of other key points about planting trees like this. There's all this stuff that is marketed and hyped. Root stimulator, total waste of time. What made those roots grow? It wasn't anything that was in the mix out here. Those roots grew from sugars that were already inside that plant tissue. All we did was take away the restricting surface and away they went. Um, you know, another, another one of these silly things that's been around forever, you shouldn't fertilize a plant the first growing season. That's ridiculous. That plant grows on energy. Everything runs on energy. You do, your cars do, the electric power for this PA system, everything runs on energy, and so does that tree. The sun, leaves cap the energy from the sun, turn it into sugars, and the more sugars we can make, the more roots we grow, the more stem diameter growth, and so on down the line. But it's all energy driven. So to wait a year before you fertilize a newly planted plant is just saying, I'm going to starve you for a year because it's just totally ridiculous. But this initial push of roots following transplant, this is due to energy that was already there. See, if you had to wait, say, all right, I won't get any root growth until I get nutrient absorption from the roots that are at the face of this ball. They go up to the leaves and make sugars and come back down. That's a long time. That is a relatively slow process. So you're dependent upon what's stored there. The more energy we can store in that tissue, the healthier the plant, the fewer the problems, the more stabilized the plant. And again, this is what I'm after. I want roots to grow. So if this plant were actually in the ground and we dug it back up, a year from now there would be roots out here several feet, two years and they'd be out several other feet. Um, you couldn't blow it over. You can break the stem off, but you couldn't blow it over. Not with a root system like that.